Margaret? Yes, it is. Hi, I'm Gina. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit today, but can you give me, um, can you tell me a little bit while you're here today? Are you came to see me? Yes, I need to come up with a, with a um, plan for diet, and that is because I have been uh, diagnosed with prediabetes. Okay. And what is your understanding of prediabetes? Pretty good, but I, it runs in the family. My dad is a type 2 diabetic and on insulin. And um, I have a, you know, family history. I don't know if it's genetic or not, but um, I know that it can cause all kinds of other health problems. And that right now, <clears throat> according to the clinic, um, most of us were over there because um, while we don't qualify to be called diabetic yet, we're moving in that direction apparently significantly enough that that we better do something about it now. Okay, okay. Um, and it sounds like that it's scary for you to have diabetes or pre-diabetes because it runs in the family and it's affected other members and um, is there anything um, else that they told you or your doctor told you? about the condition? Well, that it, while you can, you know, move rather quickly, that usually it's a fairly slow disease in that um, if we catch it early enough now that um, we can keep it at bay for maybe the rest of my life. Um, that in some cases it is reversible, but, you know, they can't guarantee that. So, and um, how much, um, what, do you have any fears surrounding pre-diabetes? I think my only fear is right now that I won't be able <coughs> to figure out a plan that's pretty sustainable and that, um, that will keep me out of trouble. Okay. So it sounds like it's important to you to um, keep it at bay so it doesn't move into the next phase. Oh, that would be the ideal, phase. absolutely. Okay. Um, and um, so. How confident are you in your ability to be able to control your prediabetes? I don't think I've done a pretty good job. Uh, I think a reading scale might um, help you. So on a scale from 0 to 10, mm -hmm. 0 being not at all confident and 10 being extremely confident, um, your ability to be able to control your diabetes from here um, on out. Probably three. A three? Okay. <clears throat> and how important is it to you, Margaret? Well, I like the, between a seven and an eight. Okay. So your confidence level right now is a three out of ten. Um, it's higher than zero, so you do have some, it sounds like you have some confidence in your ability to control your prediabetes, um, what would it take to get it a little bit higher on the scale? I think if I could figure out a program that I know I could last on, okay. that I wouldn't abandon, you know, maybe after four months, something like that. I mean, I think I can sort of stick to something for a little bit of time, mm -hmm. but I'm not very good at changing everything and then saying, oh, well, oh, that's the new way I'm going to do everything. I, I, I seem to fall back into my old habits a lot. Mm -hmm. 
And when you say a, a program to last on, um, do you have any ideas of like what type of program that you would be interested in? Or what does well, I think I'm you? really more thinking at that point about um, the types of foods that I'm eating and um, the the types of choices that I'm making. So um, it sounds like you want to make some changes in your life, but it, um, you're not sure if you'll be able to do it. I, I think I could probably do most anything for a little bit. Okay. Um, and, and I do find myself thinking, oh my gosh, what if I could never, you know, have birthday cake again or something like that. Mm -hmm. I guess I know that in really, in the big scheme of things, that's unreasonable, but I guess that's where my head goes. So you're confident that you could change for a little while, oh, yeah. but when yeah. it comes to maybe birthdays or holidays, um, you're not sure how sustainable a strict no sugar diet. Right, maybe. right. Okay. Um, well, I was wondering if I could um, provide you with just a little bit of information as far as about food choices, like for instance with birthday cake. Okay. Is sure. that okay with you? So um, I actually, I hear that a lot, especially with prediabetes, is I'll never be able to eat fruit or cake <clears throat> um, ever again. But um, <clears throat> our, understanding, our understanding of it is once in a while, that is okay. Um, that you're not going to have to completely cut out all sweets. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's true you're in the, you're in the um, stage where it's before diabetes, um, However, you may need to watch it, watch your, what you eat more often. But um, it, you know, it is uh, unrealistic to think that no one's ever going to have a dinner roll or mm -hmm. a birthday cake again, uh, a piece of birthday cake again. Um, did, has your doctor um, talked to you at all about medications for prediabetes? No, the clinic did say that there were several new ones out there, and that we, you know. We might, some of us might be a candidate. He, he certainly didn't say everybody, but because there are about 50 of us in the room, and that some of us would be candidates for surgery. Okay. And he didn't. Um, we don't know who. Okay. Um, so some of the information that I uh, told you about food choices. Um, where does that leave you, or how does that compare to what you previously thought? Um, well, it's nice to know that nothing is forever, you know, in terms of, in terms of, or like you say, ever. You know, that that there, it is a matter of making choices, and it is a matter of making smarter choices than what I've made. So, can I take a minute to recap everything we've talked about? Okay. Um, so, uh, recently, uh, your doctors told you that um, you have prediabetes, uh, it runs in your family, mm -hmm. your father had it, um, sounds, uh, it sounds like um, you're afraid of it progressing to the next level of diabetes, but even more so, it sounds like you're afraid you won't be able to stick to a sustainable plan for the future. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you have... Um, it's important for you to start making different food choices. Um, uh, you gave me a level of seven to eight um, of its importance, but your confidence, um, it sounded like you weren't confident in your ability to, uh, like I said, sustain something long term, which your understanding is it uh -huh. would be for throughout the rest of your yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. So, um, especially because it sounds like change is difficult for you. Um, well, that level of it especially. I think if somebody just said, oh, you're allergic to grapes. Oh, well, all right, you're allergic. and you, you, yeah. But that's just one little tiny thing. 
when somebody says you have to make this huge change of how it's you're eating and, and what you're eating every single day for the rest of your life, that's pretty daunting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like um, you're afraid of um, having to change some of the things that are important to you and that you enjoy. Well, they're easy for me now. I really, I don't, but they got me into trouble, so I gotta do something. So it sounds like a lot of change. Yeah, it like I don't want to mind. Do I don't mind the idea of changing um, at all. I, I I do want to be healthier. I do want to be um, out of danger if at all possible. But I think what I have the most um, reticence about is the fact that I know I've not lasted on any other plan. So perhaps, um, I'm wondering if we could figure out um, a program that uh, highlighted your values and wasn't, or that you felt weren't difficult if, if we um, talked about some different programs together, if that may be an option okay. for you. Sure. <laughs> it sounds like um, in the past that you have tried things, so it's been important to you to um, make healthy food choices, um, <clears throat> and uh, if we could talk about something today that you think that you could last more than four months on, mm -hmm. um, it may be something you might want to try. Um, I think what would help um, me better understand what's important to you, mm -hmm. um, if you could tell me which of um, any of these values or traits were important to you. Oh. Whew. Yeah, this is a big list. Well, right away, a good being a good parent, definitely. I think being competent, and I think not being hypocritical in what I'm doing. That's probably what I would choose. <clears throat> it sounds so given the values you gave me and what you've told me about um, and relating it um, back to um, a program um, you may be more confident in your ability to stick to a program if you felt competent about um, what the program entailed and the food choices that you had. Um, and um, you don't want to be hypocritical, but at the same time, you understand that it's difficult to stick to a strict diet. Uh -huh. um, so where does that leave you right now <coughs> as far as um, I guess I feel as if I'm, I'm kind of scared of making the wrong choice and I'm a little bit confused about what some good choices are right now given my medical circumstance. Okay, so you might want to try um, uh, a few options. Um, you're scared of making the wrong choice. Um, you're fearful of, it's, it sounds like you're fearful of trying and then failing almost. Well, I think the only reason Five minutes remaining. that I would fail would be because I made a, a bad choice. I think if I knew that this was really going to be a good choice. Now, it wouldn't be hard at all if there was like only one choice. Look, this is the one thing you have to do, and unless you're willing to do it, okay, fine. I, you got to get your head wrapped around that, and that's what you have to do. But that's not what the clinic said. The clinic said there was 
lots of different ways this could go. Okay. And I was like, oh man, now now we have to come up with what like what it is. Okay. So it sounds like if you had more um, guidance that you may be able to stick to it. Um, and uh, might I provide you with um, some food choice information specifically for people with diabetes. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Before you leave today, um, I can give you some um, food choices. Um, and it sounds like uh, in the past, um, some different programs haven't worked for you. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, you might want to try uh, a different program um, specifically for people with prediabetes that gives you more of a structured um, <clears throat> path to follow okay. um, with prediabetes. Uh, does that sound like something that I would be interested might want in that. to try? Uh -huh. Give you a few numbers <coughs> of um, some different support groups here at U of M, uh -huh. as well as some more information um, about food choice and exercise and programs for you to follow up with. Uh -huh. um, and how does it, how do these ideas sound to you? Yeah, I'm going to need to do some of that because I'm, I know I haven't made the right ones, so hopefully somebody else has what the right ones are and, okay. and I can get in on that program. Okay. And um, how confident are you with these materials um, that you'd be able to make some changes in the next week? Well, if making some changes means you know, finding out like when the programs meet or how I get into them, I can do that. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll, there'll also be some food choices on there, and oh. um, I can give you uh, um, quite a large list. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like um, that you you're, you'll be able to make choices for yourself if you have something with maybe some more clear um, guidance. Did I well, right? I, I, I guess I'm a little bit confused about that because I know what my day is like. And so if it's going to be, well, if it doesn't fit into what my routine and my schedule with my kids already is, I'm, uh, I, my confidence level will be pretty low on that. Okay, sounds like time... <clears throat> Sounds like you need something to be able to fit into um, your life and not oh, yeah. too, too much chaos in your already normal working routine. Yeah, I mean, I want it to be something that, you know, that, that hopefully, I mean, hopefully it'll work with what, with what my life already is. If it doesn't, well, I guess that's a whole other thing I'm going to have to come to terms with. So if, um, you try a, a few things and um, you find that they're not working with you, can you come back and see me in three or four weeks and we can discuss what worked, um, okay. what didn't work, and see if we might be able to come up with a better plan specifically for your needs? Sure. Yes, great. Yeah, it sounds like if you find a way to fit a program in your life that um, seems sustainable that it might mm -hmm. be easier for you to stick with. Okay. Uh, hopefully there'll be one. <laughs> I, I think so. It, it sounds like, you know, it's very important to you. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that um, you're having trouble sticking with a program. But if you find the right one, you may... Mm -hmm. Be able to mm -hmm. try it. Mm -hmm. So before you leave today, um, I'll give you a few. Time is uh, up. Begin feedback. Five minutes of feedback. Okay. Breathe. Okay. <laughs>